<clears throat> okay, good evening. Um, today I want to talk about the structure of the federal government. And I want to use a metaphor to help you understand that structure and the metaphors uh, in relation to the family structure. I heard, I read about a metaphor being used in ancient Greece that they used to help people understand the um, medical structure in relation to what they knew about the family structure. So I thought I would take a few minutes to do the same thing. I've been reading a book by Ward Farnsworth called Farnsworth's Classical English Metaphor. And it's all about metaphors. And as you could imagine, it's called Classic English Metaphor. And um, so I started thinking that I needed to try to find a way to explain the structure of government in an easy way that people can understand and um, grasp onto uh, easily. So I put this chart up here that's one I've been working on. It's not quite finished yet, but I don't want you to really pay attention to the, all this down here as much as I want you to keep in mind this, the dots and the order. Okay, because this would be like granddad and grandmom. This would be their kids. This would be their kids. This would be their kids. And this would be their kids. So, and the legal structure or lawful system of government. This is God. This is mankind. This is mankind's creation called uh, independent state. This is the union of the independent states creation called federal system. And this is the um, federal systems creation of the dependent states. So this would be like grandparents or great grandparents, their children, their children, their children, their children. Okay, so it's basically the same system. Okay, so we'll start with the family. This is not my family. This is not me. And um, to be fair, I have pictures of two families. So here's another family, just pictures I found on the internet. Okay, so we have just the family structure. Um, you, you know, whatever you like better. And so you have the family with the children. And you have mom. Let's just take mom. And mom's got, let's just say that Mom's got, here, let's use these three kids, three kids, and um, one of them is at the age of maturity. So at the age of maturity, uh, the child is no longer a dependent to the world. They're independent, and they're out in the world. They're their own person and they can make their own decisions. So this would be mom, and this would be her independent child who's reached the age of major majority, but the child is still her dependent no matter how old they are. And if you're a mom, you know your children are your children no matter what, no matter how old they are. But when he goes out into the world and he's at the age of majority, is considered independent. He goes back home and he's dependent. Not that he's dependent on her, but he is her child and he is her dependent. He could be 50 years old and she's still going to say that he's her child and when he comes to visit her, she's going to make him dinner and set his room up so he can spend the night and all these sorts of fun things that moms do. But let's say that he grows up and he has children. These children 
are his dependents no matter how old they are. And when they come back home, he takes care of them as if they are his children because they are. So this child goes back home and this child is dependent, but he goes back out into the world and he's independent. This child has a child, <clears throat> same thing. The child reaches age of majority to the world. He's independent. He goes back home to mom's house or to dad's house and he's independent. I mean, dependent. Okay. So the government is in the same way. Okay. God creates his children, which is mankind. Mankind create an independent state. The independent state creates a federal state, and a federal state creates forts, which are dependent states, and forts have no sovereignty. The federal government have a little bit of sovereignty, so the federal government is independent, but its creation, its child, the forts, are dependent. And that's where it ends. The forts cannot, because it has no independence it can't create anything so there's like a wall it stops here there's no more generations there's no more children after this one this is the last and that's where you see in the constitution where it says a state this state this dependent state cannot create anything more no more states no state within the state so God created mankind Mankind erected states, which are independent states of the federal government. The federal government is a dependent state to the states. Because without the independent states created by the men or mankind, there can be no federal government. So you have to go like this. Oop, oop, oop. Father, child, grandchild, great-grandchild. And the contract ends here, no more. So mankind creates an independent state. The state is independent of the federal government. The federal government is dependent on the independent state. The federal government creates dependent states. The dependent state is a dependent of the federal government. The federal government is dependent on the independent state. The independent state is dependent on mankind. Mankind is dependent to God. Okay, God is independent. His independence, all independence, starts here. Starts with God. There's, as far as we know, nothing beyond that, above that. Okay, so God, man, his creation, the creation of that creation, the creation of that creation. Okay, so... Son grows up, becomes a man, and he has, um, try to get his little head in here, uh, he has a child, okay, so this is man, this man is him, he has a child, and he, the child, is independent to the world, but dependent on his parents. And then his child has a child, same thing, okay? And, of course, because humans continually create, it doesn't stop here. It just keeps creating and creating and creating into perpetuity, okay? Forever. Hopefully, forever, they're able to keep their line going. Okay, so let's say son grows up and becomes a man. And he goes back to his mom's house and he's having Christmas dinner and he forgets his manners and, you know, doesn't use his napkin. And she comes over and slaps him on the back of the head and says, what the hell are you doing? You better pick up that napkin. And so she does that because that's her child and she has control of that child. No matter if he's 40 or 50 years old, she's still mom. She's going to be mom. Saying when our states get out of hand, we, the creators of the state, are supposed to come up behind them, slap them on the back of the head, and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? The states, 
are supposed to come up behind the federal system, slap it on the back of the head and say, what the hell do you think you're doing? The federal system is supposed to come up behind the dependent state when they do wrong and slap them on the back of the head and ask, what the hell do you think you're doing? Now, we know what they're supposed to do and what they're not supposed to do because we have constitutions, which are contracts, in my opinion, a contract to stay within certain lines, and then a promise that you're going to um, stay in those lines called an oath. Okay, so let's explain this a little bit further. Let's say mom or, you know, whoever you are, maybe you're this mom, you have a thousand acres of land. And son comes up and says, hey, well, I want some land. Can I have some land? And mom says, um, no, go find your own land. You're independent to the world. Go out in the world and find your own land. And son says, well, it's harder out there than you think. And things are not the same as they were when you were a kid. And I'll do good things with the land. So mom thinks about it and she says, hmm, well, you are my child and I do want to help you. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you two acres of land and you can only grow crops on the land. The son says, done. So the son takes the land and he grows the crops and he proves to mom that he can do it. So he comes back to mom after about five years and he says, see, I did it. I did exactly what you asked me to do. I'd like to do something besides grow crops because I grew crops on an acre. I have an acre left. So she says, well, okay, I guess you can um, mine the other acre. Okay, look for minerals underwater or, or underground or whatever. So he says, okay. So then little sister grows up to age of majority. Maybe this is his little sister. I don't know. And um, she says, well, he got two acres of land. I want two acres of land. I could do stuff. And so mom says, well, we've got mining on an acre, crops on an acre. How about you, daughter, age of majority, how about you build windmills? Okay, I can do that. So the daughter grows up and she gets her two acres and she starts growing windmill or building windmills. So after a while, the children are asking for a little bit more acres to do more stuff. And mom sees how everything they're doing is good. And so she gives them a little bit more land and they can do more stuff. And maybe there's more children coming up or maybe they have grandchildren. And mom decides that they, in order to give them more land, she needs them to produce more stuff or that because they want to produce more stuff, they need more land. So she says, well, I'll give you more land, but this time we need to have some things written down. Like maybe I'll tax you, maybe I'll um, charge you for when you bring things onto the land, charge you when you bring things off of the land. I'll give you the right to anything you can, you can um, discover or create. I'll, I'll um, supply you with certain things like water or protection and the kids realize this is a really good deal and so they accept it when they accept it <clears throat> mom tells son that they can do all those things that she listed without her interference so they can make all the rules and all the regulations and all the laws that they need to make in order to get things done because maybe they have to hire employees and they need to have policies and rules and regulations so that their employees know what they can and can't do on their mom's lands. Now let's say that their mom, even though she gave them the lands, she retained absolute sovereignty over them. So mom says, when you die, I want my lands back and I'll decide what happens to the land after that. It'll return to, let's say, the family. So the lands will go back to the family. 
So the family, whoever the executor or executrix is, would continue running the land for the benefit of the family. Okay, so this is the same structure of government. So God gave the earth to mankind, and mankind is supposed to do good with it. But God retains total sovereignty over all the earth. So God doesn't charge us anything for being here. Being here is a gift. Life is a gift. Our freedom is what we um, have when we take good care of the gift. So <clears throat> mankind wants to be able to make sure that he takes good care of the land and so maybe he decides to make a state, an independent state. Now this independent state is independent to whatever it creates. So it retains its, its independence to whatever it creates. But it's always dependent to what has created it. Just like mankind is dependent upon God because if God decides to end the earth, mankind is destroyed. If God decides that one of his laws, maybe it's the law of um, light or the law of gravity or any of those laws that we um, require to live, if he destroys any of those laws, then we are also destroyed. So we are constantly, every day, dependent on God and his laws. Just like we are his creation, whatever we create is dependent upon us. So God is, has total sovereignty, has total independence. He creates mankind and mankind has total independence and sovereignty over the earth and our creations on earth. So if we see that our creation is bad, we have to destroy it. Just like if God saw that his creation was bad, he would destroy it. Okay, so anything bad eventually will be destroyed one way or another. It will be destroyed because bad things don't last. Even good things don't last because eventually bad things take over and bad things becomes worse things, and worse things end, and then springs something new from it. But mankind creates a state, and then the states together, with a little bit of sovereignty, created the federal government. So the independent state that we created is, whenever this becomes bad, is supposed to come over here and slap it around and make sure that it does what it's supposed to do and uses its manners and refrains from doing bad things. But the problem is, is that these two have gone into business together and have become bad together. They've become partners. And I'm going to explain that in a video tomorrow or the next day and how the things that these two created, they conspired to create to drain money, wealth off of the people that created it um, how its creation actually has no uh, authority and no sovereignty, no power, no jurisdiction, except for what you believe it has. So it's done this in a deceptive way. It's created a thing in a deceptive way to deceive us so that it can take from us so that it can become bad and we feel like or we think that we can't end it. Okay, now in the Constitution, this was supposed to create this, and then this was supposed to create this, and these are supposed to be forts for defense because it's a good government that defends its nation, its people, and its states. It's a good government when it defends and keeps safe and keeps free and keeps happy, happy and keeps blessed and protects the general welfare of all the people that created it. 
So these have no sovereignty because these take commands, these military members and um, military forts, which are the dependent states, because military has no sovereignty, takes commands from the federal government. So in the Constitution, you see the federal government gets orders from one state, and it just uses state, and then it gives orders to the state that created it created once these states gave lands to the federal government. So mom gave lands to her child. Her child created things on those lands. Okay, so the things that he created are just like a dependent state. Like he can create a military on the lands she gave him, but if she takes the lands back, all that belongs to her and she controls it. But if he's the boss, he controls the military. So what you create, you control. And mother is always the landlord. This is the mother, is always the landlord of her tenants, no matter who they are. And the tenants, can never become the landlords. So that would be like the military post, a military post inside of one of the states deciding that it can rule over the federal government Then the tenant becomes the landlord because mom is the landlord to the child. The child, maybe he gives some lands to someone else for some purposes and then he becomes the landlord of that and then whatever that is, if they gave land, they become the landlord of that. He's always the tenant to him. He's always the tenant to him. He's always the tenant to him. And he's always the tenant to him. Mom's always the tenant to God. Because no one is above God. Okay? So, um, I think this is a pretty good way of describing things. I took a couple of the pictures off the internet. You know, structure, family structure. But I think you understand um, pretty basically and plainly what I'm saying. This is mom and child. Um, and then you have mom, some moms who discipline their child. And you, like I said, even if your child's 50 years old, um, you're, they're still your child. They're still your dependent. You're, in a way, you feel responsible for them and all they do. And that never changes. And whatever you create, you control. And when we created the federal government or the states, we created the states and then the states created the federal government. The federal government created um, military reservations for uh, fortifications. And then they also did something underhanded, which I spoke of just a tiny bit, where they created corporations to, to provide services to the um, military, but they made us think through a deceptive practice or many deceptive practices that we have to do business with those corporations also. Okay, and that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video. So um, like, share, subscribe, and until I get the next video out, think, give this a little bit of thought. Think about this hierarchy, this structure being somewhat similar to the family structure. That which you create, you control. Once these get to age of majority, they control their creations, but they're always still under whatever created it creator created creator created creator created creator creator end okay so like share and subscribe and i'll see you in like a day or two